Can you hear me? Stand by. Okay, go. Yeah. I was going to install one of those security grills. I don't think I'll bother. Right, which is your premises? The news agent. Well, I don't think this lot are going to ram raid you for yesterday's newspapers and a packet of sweets. I don't think that's funny. Well, it's the best I can do at eight o'clock in the morning. Right, tell me what happened. Oh, Carol, this is covered in pigs. Oh, you're a great detective, Frank. Who gave me that? Your brother. Good luck, party. They say the sun's gonna shine. I'm gonna be late. No, it's only the second time. It's only my second day. What are you doing? So. Oi! Cheer up. It's gonna be fine. Okay. You should really be able to lift it higher by now. You see what's happening? You must straighten this part of your back. That's it. Uh -uh, keep your chin down. There. Now, feel the line of your energy. Pelvis, up to your heart, to the head. There, think how elegantly you can stand. If only. And be relaxed. I must look really foolish. You look wonderful. Oh, sorry, Gav. Oh, Got your beauty sleep, did you? Need to ask. This is DCI Peters. All right. He's from London. Oh. I haven't trained him yet. <laughs> There's been another drive-in. Zoot suit, men's fashion shop on the parade. Oh, yeah, I know. They do some nice gear. Would you excuse me, sir, while I take him away and attach some electrodes to his head? I'll be in 210 if you need me. Thank you. What's wrong? Why does Mallet hate me so much? What? What? Hello, Vicky. Who is it? It's Boris. I wanted to catch you before you left. I'm uh, instituting a patient information group. Later, okay? Just an uh, informal. Next time, please knock. He said, could you meet him a few minutes earlier? Thanks, Helen, that's fine. But he said not to ring him. Vicky, I would like us to talk. Sure, Boris. First thing tomorrow. See 
you after lunch, Gwen. See you later. Mr. Mayorbridge. Mr. Mayorbridge. Hello. Sorry. What is it, Gwen? There was someone in the church. I thought you were just coming in, but you weren't. Well, see if you can find our visitor. Yeah, sure. Uh, can I move this stuff, Gwen? That was Sergeant Pearson's. He had a two-tier system. Unsolved and unsolvable. Huh. Neil White? No really good. Kim Sug. Kim Sue is a chef. Some old dear wanted us to charge him for peeing in her garden. Look, why don't you just put that lot over there on the filing cabinet and let WPC Brent sort it out? Then you'd have a nice clean desk, wouldn't you, eh? Ah, Johnny. Have you met Detective Sergeant Nash? He's from London. We met yesterday. Oh, you certainly made an impression on Johnson. Doesn't normally get that excited. I went to London once. I had to go and meet the Queen. She's a lot smaller than I thought she'd be. But then again, size isn't everything, as we both know. <laughs> Frost. Where? One hundred percent dead. Not the best way to start your first week, is it? Good morning, sir. Were you the first one here? With PC Lambert. The emergency call was made from the telephone box over there. What call? A woman called emergency services at 12.27. Said she'd just seen a man assaulting a woman. Assault is not the word I would have chosen. Then she hung up. No name or anything. I reckon she was probably scared. Yes, she probably was, Sims. Why don't you go and get those kids out that phone box? John? That's right, you work out when the engine was switched off. I'll see if she's left a suicide note. Do we know who she was? I'm running a check on a vehicle, sir. 
What about this? Haven't touched it, sir. She was a pretty woman. Yes. The sweet tooth, by the looks of it. is registered to Victoria Imelda Phillips, 16B Crayford Road. What did you say her name was again? Victoria Imelda Phillips. Yes, looks about it. Is the duty officer been informed? Yes, sir. Who is it, George Toulon? Well, get the scientific boys down here, will you, and get a few more coppers to keep back the sightseers. Where does that lead to? Well, I don't know. Why don't you go and have a look? Right. Gov. Right, Gov. But not now, eh? Get her keys. They're in the car. It's a question of resources. I have already authorised an increase in manpower for the parade, King Street and uh, Hadley Gardens. But however alarming these ram raids may be, we must bear in mind that Denton is not being targeted specifically. That's what you told us after the first two incidents. Mm -hmm. This is the work of a highly organised gang working throughout the country. It's, um, it's unlikely that they'll strike here again. Someone's going to get hurt, I can tell you that. Ram raiding is a crime one normally associates with the more deprived areas of the country. In Denton, I believe we should regard this new phenomenon as a symptom of our general moral lassitude. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, let's not be too preoccupied with this issue. I can confirm that a team under DCI Peters is working exclusively on this case. Now, the uh, vehicle used in last night's robbery has already been recovered. So I hope to have some heartening news for you next time you meet. Was he one of her patients? I hadn't spoken to him before. Here we are, Mr. Newman. Oh. Mr. Ivanovich, I'm Detective Inspector Frost. This is Detective Sergeant Nash. You don't look like the police. Well, when you get to CID, they let you wear your own clothes. Well, none of the practitioners are under contract with the centre. It is, uh, you know, a facility they use. Vicky ran her own affairs. But there was a reception book for appointments for the patients. It's confidential. But, but yes, of course, you must see it. Did you leave the building at all this morning? I was here all morning. I had three patients. All right, okay, fine. I knew that something was wrong. I see these things coming. I wanted to discuss it with Vicky, but she was anxious to get away. You want to meet Mr. Newman? I have no idea. Yeah, come. Oh, is that for me? Tea. What you asked for? Chamomile. <clears throat> oh, right. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much. Just how I like it. <clears throat> Sorry, you, um, <clears throat> you said you knew something was wrong. Yeah, but I didn't know what. She was imbalanced. I just could feel it. Well, mentally? No. No, against her line. You know? No. At our healing centre, we do not treat the symptoms of any illness. We investigate the whole being. It is, you know, holistic approach. I consider it is not possible to treat someone unless you are feeling well in yourself. With Vicky, it was lost. Really? I can tell you are sceptical. No, it's just that I find it very difficult to accept health advice from a chain smoker. Yeah, I'm sorry to smoke. I haven't had a cigarette for years. Filthy habit. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. What was your relationship with Vicky? And there was no relationship. You can ask anyone who worked here. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. What I meant was, was she a friend or did she just work here? 
I would like Vicky to have considered me her friend. Did she discuss her problems with you? If she had done that, she might still be alive. All right. Thank you. That's a lovely girl, that Helen Guff. Oh, yeah. When you're booking in. Hey, you do this free assessment. Find out exactly what your body needs. In your case, it's the receptionist, as you do. Ah, what's your good news, Sims? Not a thing, Gov. Spoken to all the locals? No one saw anything before we turned up. What, an old sports car? Aren't there any spotty ten-year-olds living around here? They'd all have been at school, wouldn't they, sir? Yeah, all right, clever it. Here, Sims. Yes, sir. Find a bin for that, will you? Yes, sir. Right, all working now, is yes. it? Yes. Good, no. thanks. Cheers. Here, have you got any change on you? It's all right, don't look so worried. Look, what I want you to do is, when you've given those to Forensic, Take a photograph of Vicky to all the local shopkeepers. See if you can find out what she was doing here. Also see if anyone's heard of our Mr Newman. PC Lambert's been along there already. Yeah, I know, and he didn't find anything, did he? One of the golden rules of detection is if you don't find something, keep looking. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Detective Sergeant Nash, Denton CID. This is the murder. You recognize this girl? Take a closer look, it's not a great photo. Well, there's a man with a long face. Mm. Nobody recognise her? No. Oh, well, you'd be sorry to hear that we haven't found the knife. We found a bit of an air rifle and a rusty old radiator, which I'm having fitted in our office. Oh. Go on, go and get a cup of tea. Cheer up, get me a cup too. Two sugars. I've got an address for a pen. Manchester. Oh, well. Let some other plod break the bad news, eh? And a message from Mr Mullet. Oh, lovely. Left me something in his will, is he? He wants to see you as soon as you get in. Right. I'll let you know when that is. This is a nasty one, Jack. Yes, I know. Terrible. Any ideas? No. Nice young girl in bed by 10. Supposed to be meeting a man at 12.30. Apart from that, I've got no idea. I'm going to go down and take a look at her in a minute. Why did you pick him, Jack? Yeah, no. I wish I didn't. All right, come on, listen up. Let's have your attention, please. Right. Vicky Imelda Phillips is our VIP. No form, no friends. Nice, quiet young woman, according to her landlord, a certain Mr. Bannister. And no jokes, please, about leaning on the witness. <laughs> now, Vicky was a self employed physiotherapist. And have a discreet word with Detective Sergeant Nash here if you don't know what one of those is. Ball breaker. <laughs> yes, all right. Thank you very much. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because Mr. Toolan here has got some information which might shed a bit of light on that, George. Well, Miss Phillips saw a number of her patients at the Lotus Healing Centre on Cotton Road. Now, the only thing we have on the establishment are two complaints from last year alleging some of the therapists were using it as a knocking shop. <laughs> now, both complaints came from the same patient, a man who thought he was being overcharged. <laughs> it's all right, all right, come on, pack it in. I can't imagine there's anything in it, but as you take the statements from her patients, find out which part of their body she was working on. All right, come on, let's get going, come on. Jack! Good afternoon, sir. I was wondering um, whether or not you'd found somewhere to live. No, not yet, sir. I haven't had time to look for anything. But you must. Make time. Why, somebody be complaining? No, 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 not at all. 
I'm sure everyone at the section house will be sorry to see you go. Oh. Very friendly banter. Are they? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. good. Who needs a mortgage? <laughs> Well, that was all, really, Jack. Um, good luck. Thank you, sir. Eighteen wounds in her neck, shoulders, and uh, upper back. The knife had a single sharpened edge, very sharp, approximately six inches in length, one inch wide. Two principal veins were punctured and both lungs. The attacker was right-handed. Oh, well, that eliminates a lot of people, doesn't it? He's not squeamish, this one, is he? I'm from London. Cause of death was most likely heart failure. There's no indication that she reached out, tried to stand up or defend herself in any way. No lacerations on her hands, fingernails, perfect. But there is something here which might be of interest. What is it? Oh, he's so young, isn't he? It's a diaphragm. A contraceptive device. Oh, right. Yeah, of course, it's all condoms nowadays, yeah, I can isn't it? see what it is now. Is there anything else in there we should know about? Spermicidal jelly. Excuse me, Alan. Although there's no sign of intercourse having taken place recently. Oh. Excuse me, sir. I see you, right. OK, well, thank you. The, uh, the killer would get very bloody, wouldn't they, standing above? Well, it depends. I mean, she wouldn't exactly gush. It wasn't an artery. All right, come on, what's your bright idea? Well, a six-inch blade, and that's big. You'd have to bring it down from up here to get it in so deep. Yeah. Well, you'd see the knife, broad daylight. Telephone caller said she saw a woman being assaulted. If you witness somebody being stabbed in the neck, you don't say assaulted, I don't think. I mean, you said so yourself. Conclusion? Either the caller saw something that happened before the stabbing, something completely unrelated. Doubtful. Right. Or she saw Vicky being struck before the knife came out. Well, there's no evidence of any former blows. Of course the caller saw more. That's why she didn't stay on the line. And I also know that because she hasn't come forward, we ain't going to find her. Well, with respect, sir, I don't see how you can know that. Experience. Hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Jack. Something come back for me on this uh, Phillips murder? From the emergency services. It's the call from the car park. Oh, right, yeah. Mr. Nash, your wife called. Twice. Nothing urgent, I believe. Also something from forensic. Ah, uh, um, No, nothing yet. No? no? Could be in that big brown envelope marked urgent for the attention of D.I. Frost. That's it. A bit young to be married, aren't you? How old were you? I asked first. 24. Same as me. All right, let's drop it then. Not all the kids would have been at school that morning. See who was bunking off. Hello, police. How can I help? We know your location, love. What is your name? That forensic pick the bones out of that, will you? Good grief. Look what they've managed to get out of Vicky's organiser. Addresses, client and personal, personal finance, schedule. Oh. Carol. Hi. Uh, I don't know. Hang on. Um, my wife wants to know if I'm coming home, Gov.
Mayor Bridge, M E Y, Lead Riverside Gardens, very nice too. Jonathan Adam Mayerbridge. Oh, at last. Go on. Tell me he's out on bail for murder. ABH. Oh, go on, sounds promising. One year suspended for two years. Yeah, go on. Uh, drunk and disorderly, drunk driving, that was both ten years ago. Nothing since. And Gov, I really have to go. Yeah, all right, just one more. Come on, one for the road. Lemon. L. Lemon, as in gin and tonic. Terence, 41 Easty Chambers. Left. You know, I've never met anyone who drives so much like me. It's uncanny. Wouldn't have imagined you living down here, Gov. Well, not crummy enough. No, but I mean... It's... Well, I don't live down here. Oh, you mean we're still working? Yeah, not exactly. Pull in just over there, will you? Who lives there, then? Jonathan Mayerbridge. Actual bodily harm, drunk and disorderly. Riverside Gardens. Hmm. He's working late. Doesn't look like a haven for criminals. Oh, I don't know. A lot of unreturned library books down here, I bet. Oh well. Take me home, Frank. Reception house. Yes. Who do you want to speak to? Hang on, I'll go and get it. Evening, sir. Constable. What's that? More rules? Kitchen cleaning rotor. What's my name doing up there? Can you not do alternate Wednesdays? No, I certainly can't. You can always substitute. Here, it is substitution. As long as you let the House Committee know by the first of each month. I don't believe this. Oh, what's up? Well, someone keeps nicking me food. They don't, do they? Let's have a look. Well, they haven't touched mine, look. Well, you're a DI, aren't you? Bring it up at the next house meeting. I will. I need that I go with me milk and all. Oh, God. some people. Oh, dear. You're going to be this early every night? I thought you might put up some shelves before you retire. I do. I want to retire. Get away from all this. Oh, it's murder. Oh, no. I saw it on the news. Every half hour. No, watching television's the only thing to do in this place. Uh. Inspector Frost, got to mention. Oh, don't care, he's doing my head in. Hello. Hello, Gav. Thank you. Right, yeah. See you then. Frost? Yeah, he, uh, he said get a good night's sleep, so he's not so bad, is he? Mm. He, uh, he wants me to pick him up in the morning. What time? Six bloody thirty! <laughs> Jonathan Meyerbridge at home. It is Millie, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, word, how you've grown. Don't remember me, do you? Yeah, I do. Ah, so, still keeping out of trouble? 
I suppose you must be, otherwise I would have heard about it. Millie was one of... How do you do? Millie, Millie, there's no need to leave us. Perfectly all right. Jonathan Maybridge. Detective Sergeant Nash. Inspector Frost. Barnabas! You're running. He that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Yes, sir. Billy, would you? Yes, I'm very uh, familiar with Millie's unfortunate past. There are no secrets in this house. She looks after your children. Uh, yes, I have three children. Actually, it's not Millie I've come about, sir. A young woman was murdered in Denton yesterday. Yes, I heard. A, a, a local woman? Vicky Phillips. Oh, good God. I know her. She's, uh, she's a, a, a nurse, a physiotherapist. Hmm. Your name and address were found in her organiser. Well, yes, uh, yes, you would. Uh, she treated me after a fall. Can I ask you, when was the last time you saw her? Well, it was uh, winter. It must have been a year ago. Uh, I can find out the date if necessary. Hmm. Only your name and address were found in her electronic diary that she bought just six weeks ago. We found the receipt. Well, that's curious. Mm. Now, why would she enter those details? Maybe she thought you were going to fall over again. Well, I can only suppose that Miss Phillips uh, perhaps thought she might see me again one day in the future. And you had no further contact with the young woman? No, none whatsoever. How many times have you met Vicky Phillips altogether? Oh, well, on a dozen occasions, no more. Time enough to get to know someone. Would you say that you were friends? Not friends, no. No, well, friendly. Yes, I suppose so. Did she know you were married? Well, do you know, I've no idea. And I can't really see that it's relevant. Where were you between 12.15 and 12.30 yesterday? I was at the New Union Hall on Eaton Road, where I hold a lunchtime scripture meeting every Tuesday. Who else attended this meeting? Three members of our church. The butcher up at Holly Grove? Yes, Mr Sykes was there. He didn't leave his shop until 20 past 12. Well, I can't say exactly what time he arrived. I usually prepare my notes in the office there until we begin at half past. And who saw you before that? Uh, Gwen Holland, our church secretary. And the third person? Uh, Betty Gunner, who is blind. He's lying, mm. but he's very good at it. I wonder if I could get a search warrant on suspicion. Eh? Well, well, maybe not. Listen, what I want you to do is dig out anything you can find on Jonathan Mayerbridge. Go right back to his birth certificate. Now, I know he's been up before the bench a couple of times, so get in touch with WPC Brent, see if there are any press reports. What's the story on the living? Oh. Millie Atkinson. Oh, her mother died and she was taken into care. Got caught nicking cigarettes from the local shop, set her bedroom on fire, broke the arm of a social worker. I had to tell the poor woman I couldn't charge a 12-year-old. Jesus, she's looking after his kids. Yeah. Uh, God, blimey, look at that. I should have been in the Magistrate's Court four and a half minutes ago. You reckon you can make it? Don't even know where it is, Gun. Oh, bang goes some more taxpayers' money. She was the one, wasn't she? I knew her. Jonathan. I knew her. It's all forgotten. And there's nothing more I need to know. Haven't you got any notes? No, I don't need any. It's all in here. Regina versus Smith. I'll only be ten minutes.
<clears throat> Ten minutes. Yeah, sorry about that. It was the wrong case. Regina versus Patel. Hello. Mm -hmm. Here's a friend of ours. That's the butcher up at Holly Grove. Who's the other bloke? It's Edward Gull, solicitor. Member of the Police Community Forum and General Knowall. I have found the love of God and a good woman. Not another drop will touch my lips. He was a drinker. Yeah. When I was sliding into an abyss, God showed me how far a man could fall before he became my saviour. She liked the look of his face. Yeah, I bet she did. She changed his life. How did they manage to get into a national newspaper, though? Her maiden name was Corley. Well? Corley's water biscuits. Oh, so she had money. Very interesting. Thank you, Jane. Jack, yes. Mr. Mullet would like to see you. All right, I shall hurtle down there as soon as I've had my coffee. I've checked out the financial data from Vicky's organiser. Oh. There have been ten payments into her deposit account in the last year. Each one, £400 in cash, paid in at different banks. Different banks. That is not uninteresting. Good. For you, sir. Oh, right, thanks, yes. Frost. All right, hold on. Frank. Go. Chamomile tea, lady. What else do they want to know? Oh, that was all. I made it perfectly clear that uh, I no longer had any association with the woman. But you must keep nothing from me, Jonathan. Oh, I've told you everything. Very well. I would say, then, that everything now depends on Ruth. Why is that? Because I can think what you dare not. If you can't even imagine that Ruth might have murdered this woman, then you must be more in love with your wife than I thought possible. That's a horrendous idea. And I pray that you give it no more thought. I will pray. I know that you're innocent, Jonathan. And I will do everything in my power to protect you. We must walk through this fire together. I saw a light under the door. I was about to go in when I heard him talking. I thought there must be someone with him. Well, what was he saying? It was all in Polish. And then he started shouting. I was worried, so I watched him through the door. He was bent over in a chair, as if he was asleep. Then he took all the letters away and closed the cabinet. What happened to him? I burned him. What did they say? Well, they were just letters. How are you? I am fine. I don't know these people. One, if you did put a match to letters that were addressed to Vicky, you've destroyed valuable evidence. That's a criminal offence, and I can put you in prison for that. And two, I don't believe you. Those letters meant something to Vicky. They obviously meant something to you, the way that you were behaving last night. You can't protect her, Boris. She's dead. Who oh, was it? Her lover? Her lovers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. What was oh. it? Look, did he sign himself Mr. Newman? Did he use his real name? Where did they meet? You knew that she was seeing another man and you couldn't bear it because you were in love with her. You tried to dissuade her. That's what you were doing in the car park, pretending to start your motor scooter. Helen saw you from the window. You know what? If I had feelings for someone, I could never destroy anything so precious to them. Good evening. 
You wrote these love. It's perfectly all right. My wife knows everything. You wrote these love letters to Miss Phillips. Yet when I spoke to you earlier, you said that you hadn't seen her for a year. Well, perhaps a few months. Uh, whenever it was, it was ended perfectly amicably. Uh, we were doing wrong, people were being hurt. Miss Phillips understood that, and she was very sensible about it. So it wasn't you that she arranged to meet yesterday? No. Mr. Newman. Is that what you call yourself? Sometimes? Uh, I don't know a Mr. Newman, and I've no idea what she was doing yesterday. When we found Vicky, she was wearing a gold chain round her neck. Now, we understand that gold chain was a gift. Yes, I, I did give her a chain a long time ago. You gave her the chain two months ago. Yeah, this letter. It's not dated, but it's postmarked even earlier. Less than a month. Can you explain that? Not easily. That's all right. I don't mind complicated explanations. I'm used to them. From tomorrow, I shall be in York for two days at a writer's seminar. If you have any further questions, I'd appreciate it if you address them to my solicitor, Edward Garnet Gullen Maitland, who is also the minister at our church. I know him. Was Mr. Maybridge at the New Union Hall between 12 and 12.30 on Tuesday? Yes. And how can you be sure? I saw him. Where? Through the door. It's glass. Oh, right. Listening to County Radio, it's the afternoon show and I'm looking after you. Hello, Millie. I'm collecting the kids. That's all right. I'll walk a little way with you. It was funny, us meeting like that, wasn't it? You were waiting for me? No, I don't mean just now. I meant yesterday. Mr Frost, things here are going really well. I don't want nothing to spoil it. But Mr Maybridge knows all about you. I mean, now that everything's out in the open, there's nothing left to be afraid of, is there? Do you know why I came round the house yesterday? Vicky Phillips. Hmm. Mr. Maybridge brought me into his study just, just after you left yesterday. I was all in tears because I thought that you told him something new. Millie, really, as if I would. I don't know, I wasn't thinking. They were both in there, him and his wife. And, and he told me that him and Vicky had been secret friends for a couple of years. Yeah. And that I would hear all sorts of lies. Not from me, love, not from me. How did his wife react to this revelation? She's always the same. She don't get upset. How did uh, you get to meet the Mayor Bridges? I was up for shoplifting and one of the solicitors was a friend of theirs, Mr Gull. He was good to me. He got me this job. Do you live in, do you? Yeah. Got my own bathroom. Oh, that's nice. This Mr Gull, do you see him anymore? Yeah, he often comes to the house. Gets on really well with Jonathan. 
I see. How does he get on with Mrs. Mayerbridge then? With Ruth? Hmm. Well, they're friendly. It's Jonathan he comes to see, though. Oh. What does he come to see him about then? I don't know. They're writing some religious book together. All right. Mr. Sykes, Miss Holland, Jonathan Maybridge, Billy Atkinson all told us exactly what you told them to say. The truth. That's what I would expect of any one of my clients. Yes, of course. It does help to massage it a bit, though, doesn't it? What are you thinking of in particular? Gwen Holland. She told us that she saw Jonathan Maybridge through a pebble glass door at 12.30. Perhaps you told her to say that he was in the office from 12 o'clock. I'm certain that she told you the truth. Of course. She's terrified of you, though, isn't she? Nonsense. You know you should be very careful when you make allegations that you can't substantiate. Are you going to bring charges against my client? Which one? Jonathan Mayerbridge. Oh, I don't know. It's early days. Things will reveal themselves. Well, let's hope that they do. You represented Jonathan Mayerbridge when he was accused of actual bodily harm, didn't you? Jonathan apprehended a youth who was running from the scene of a crime. A woman in her 80s had been beaten unconscious, her teeth broken. Jonathan took hold of the youth who struggled and accidentally gave himself a small bruise on the cheek. But we all know how fallible the law is. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye. You look absolutely knackered, if you don't mind me saying so. I was stuck in a car on West Gardens till four this morning. Lord, got a tip off. How about you? Me? Four o'clock this morning, I was in bed. Vicky Phillips? Right, how far have we got with our case then, Frank? Nowhere. There you are, that's a fair assessment. The prime suspect is a religious author from Riverside Gardens, with a conviction for ABH. However, he got it by protecting an old age pension. So, public enemy number one turns out to be the local hero. So, no, we are not doing brilliantly at all. Oh, dear. My great grandfather built the house. He actually laid the bricks. We were taught self reliance from an early age. You and your husband are not employed. What a strange thing to say. Of course, we are. I work for various charities, and Jonathan is an author. Do you ever join your husband on any of his book beaners? He prefers to go alone. Why do you ask? Well, it's just that he's managed to keep Vicky Phillips a secret from you for over a year. I wonder what else he managed to conceal. Have you ever read any of Jonathan's books? No. I'm sure they're too specialised for me. Not at all. They're written for the common man. Jonathan has an integrity that is absent to most of the people one meets nowadays. He has a great moral strength. Is that why he can have an affair with a nurse? I can't deny that I feel an immense relief now that she's gone. Someone's answered your prayers then, have they? I believe that everything turns out for the best in the long run. Do you? Getting stabbed in a car park is hardly the best thing that could have happened to Vicky, is it? Who are we to say? So, when did you go out then, Millie, on Tuesday morning? Uh, Twelve. We went up to the playground, just behind the carpet warehouse place. You and who else? Me and Mrs. Maybridge. We were there until the quarter to one. And who told you about the murder? It was on the news, two o'clock. But it didn't go out on the bulletin until four. County radio. And what time did Mr. Maybridge leave for the church? I couldn't say. Well, he always tells you when he leaves the house. It's a bit odd he didn't tell you, isn't it? He doesn't always tell me. He said he told you. Well, I didn't hear nothing. Might have had my radio on. Okay, right. 
It's Mayor Bridge, but I haven't got any evidence. Mayor Bridge was in the New Union Hall when the murder was committed. So I'm led to understand. Where'd you get that from, Mr. Gull? You may or may not know that Edward Gull, apart from being a solicitor and a minister of religion, is also an outspoken member of the Police Community Forum. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, what a busy man. If Gull chooses to bring a complaint, it'll stick, and you'll be off the case. And what, may I ask, has Mr. Gull got to complain about? You've been parking your car outside the Mayor Bridge house at night. Yes, dedication to my job. What I'd really like to do is to give his house a good going over, but I'd need a search warrant for that. You'll need something very substantial before a warrant is authorised. Gull also said that you'd be making slanderous statements about his clients. Oh, Gull is fixing Mayor Bridge's alibi. Can you prove that? Be careful, Jack. Edward Gull could make trouble. Just because Gull has appeared on Radio 4's Thought for the Day doesn't mean to say we've got to take any notice of him. What about the call from emergency services? Well, Forensic are trying to clean up the recording. As soon as we get a recognisable voice, we could put out an appeal on television. I think it would be very useful if you could do that for us, sir. You know, appeal to the mystery caller to come forward. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Appeal for witness. Right, now, um, change of subject. Have you heard about our Ram Raiders? I'm sure I haven't, but what have they done now? Landwigs was broken into last night. Landwigs? Old Landwigs? What do they get away with? Half a ton of ladies' corsets? The security guard tackled the gang. He's now in intensive care. Catching this Ram Raided gang is our top priority. I've been called in to see County this afternoon. So, as there are no new leads on the Phillips case, I want you to help DCI Peters full time. Do you understand me? Exactly. So. It's exactly like the others. Japanese four-wheel, four villains. Where, uh, where are they now? It takes just 50 seconds and all you've got left are coat hangs. The vehicle used in this raid belongs to Dave Smethurst. He claims it was nicked. He's got two previous convictions for handling stolen goods. I had to return the vehicle to him. Big Dave? Thought he was in the clear. Well, we've had information that Smethurst was away from his home on each night that a raid took place. Oh. I want him watched. 24 hours. Mind the carpet. Comes a bit loose as you turn the corner. Could always look from downstairs, love. Well, you can see much more from up here. Number 42. Curtains are drawn. Can you see? Big Dave's there now, is he? Sleeping. Hall light switches on at 9pm. At 11 he leaves the house and he gets back at 3am. What's that, every night, is it? Most nights. I've written it all down. Does anyone visit the house? No, never. At least not while you're watching. Well, that's all the time, love. I mean, with these break-ins every week and I feel vulnerable on my own. Of course. Oh, uh, I see you like music. Oh! Oh, it's my daughter's room. We don't get on. She's always round her boyfriends. Are you going to read me my right? Just a couple of things, sir. You were down for the kitchen yesterday and I couldn't help noticing... It wasn't done. Right. It didn't matter too much because we can always reschedule. And the other thing? We've, um, got a mouse, sir. Well, I'm not feeding it. It's been seen outside your door. And I, we were wondering whether you were keeping food in your room. As it happens, I do keep biscuits in my room because they wouldn't last five minutes in here. Security! That's what you want to put your mind to. Anyway, I'd love to stay and talk, but I've got to be in church in ten minutes. <clears throat> we are not to be brought into the kingdom of God by sheer terror. Those who describe the horrors that await the unbeliever do a disservice to us all. For what use is a convert who has not willingly embraced Jesus Christ? 
who has not asked forgiveness of God. If we have a duty, it is to reveal to the unbeliever what they are forgoing, the wonder of God's love which is there for every man, woman and child. Finally, let us not forget the love we must give one another. Today we extend our love to the young woman in our community whose life was cut short so brutally, Victoria Phillips. Beautiful young woman in the prime of life. Why God chose her, we shall never know. Mm. Is that what we came here for? I think we put the wind up and well, it's hardly worth the eye of the time. Listen, Gov, would you like to meet my wife? Not now, eh? I've had enough excitement for one day. How is she, by the way? Why would you ask? Because it's a friendly thing to do, because I work with you. Well, pretty bad actually. She uh she says she can't wait to get out of this place. Oh, well, that's the Denton detail, that is. The first six years are the same for everyone. Look at that, a Mr. Free Pizza. It's expired. Well, don't smile. Bloody right, I won't. So we off this murder then, or what? No, not at all. We're the elite, Frank. We can do two jobs at once. I bet Carol was delighted when she discovered that you were going to spend more time in the bedroom with me than with her. Yeah, she was beside herself. Yeah, well, she'll have to be, because there's no one else. At least I hope. I bet this will turn out to be a complete and utter waste of time. Well, why didn't you tell Mullet that? Because this is Mullet's brainwave. <sighs> well, at least it is until nothing happens and the whole thing will be my crummy idea. Hello. I oh, see the neighbours are up. No, what's he doing? He's thinking. Oh dear, I must give up this filthy habit. Oh, that feels empty. Perhaps I'm hungry. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely look hungry. I think I'll go off and make myself some hot cuisine. You know, steak pie chips and mushy mm. bees. Good night. Knock, knock. Oh, I can hardly see a thing. Yeah, let me. Oh, see. thank you, Frank. Very nice. Lovely. Well, I'll be downstairs. If you need anything. Right. Thank you, Frank. Hmm. What the hell are we doing here? Mm. Gypsy cream. You know, it strikes me as odd that no one around here remembers her, an attractive young woman like that. I couldn't say. Ah, oh, because you've been told not to. You're not very pally with Edward Gull, aren't you? He's my solicitor. What was so important that he had to bend his ear on the courthouse steps, I wonder? That's my own business. I don't know this part of Denton at all, you know. We abide by the law in Holland Road. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for somewhere to live. Do you think I'd like it round here? I really couldn't say. 
Did you see Jonathan Mayerbridge at any time here in Hollygrove on Tuesday? I did not. Did you leave the shop at any time on Tuesday morning? Only afterwards. When I came back from church. I went to my home for a few minutes. Oh, yes. Where's that? Upstairs, is it? No, I don't use my rooms here. I have a house opposite. You went to call Jonathan Mayerbridge. Why? Did I? I really cannot remember who I called. Oh, yeah. That's Jonathan Mayerbridge. Look, one minute, 20 seconds. I've checked. I cannot recall. Oh, well. Must push on. No rest for the wicked. I'll tell you one thing. I'll have half a pound of them sausages. How did you get in here? Miss Phillips' keys. I see you've tidied the place up, changed the sheets. I said that Jonathan could use these rooms. I never saw the young woman come in here. See no evil, hear no evil, eh? Who were you phoning just now from your place? Was it Edward Gull? to ask him what you should do. Jack. Yeah, Mr. Mayerbridge is here with his solicitor. Oh, wonderful. Is the jungle room empty? It's free. All right, put him in there. I'll be with you in a minute. Right. Frank, give Mr Sykes a five-minute break so he can stretch his legs. Then meet me in the main interview room, will you? Mr Maybridge feels there have been misunderstandings in the three interviews conducted with him. My client has prepared a statement which described in detail his relationship with Miss Phillips. I trust this will end the needless intrusion into his private affairs. In detail. Not much for two years of being in love, is it? It wasn't love. Well, £400 a month is a bit steep for someone you didn't love. Oh, I see that your client hasn't informed you. Well, this is the £400 a month in used notes paid into the young woman's bank account every month. Mr. Mayerbridge, was Vicky blackmailing you? No. I simply wanted to reward her. And did your wife know about this largesse? 
my wife has no knowledge of this. Inspector, I think it would be propitious for my client tonight to discuss this matter further before helping you with your inquiries. Fine. We have no reason to keep you here any longer. But just before you do run away, can you tell me why you closed that account last month? Because the relationship had come to an end. Oh, I see. So Vicky was bonking someone else on Tuesday. She didn't waste much time. You're right, it couldn't have been love. Mr. Mayerbridge, you and Vicky used to meet regularly in a room above Mr. Sykes' shop. Can you tell me the last time you arranged to meet her there? It must have been uh, some time ago. It's a direct question. Give me a date. My client doesn't remember. Does he decide everything for you? Oh, Mr. Gull. Would you like to join us next door? We're going to interview Mr. Sykes. I'll send someone from my office. Mr. Gull has left. Yes, I'm sorry. He had to go. I don't want anyone else. Well, we don't need anyone else. Would you like a cup of tea? He's left me. Man that is in honor. And understandeth not. It's like the beasts that perish. What's that, the Bible? Or Shakespeare? I see you've cut your fingers. There they were, together all those days, directly above my head, taking me for a poor fool. How did you find out? I heard her laughing. At me, I expect. I saw her leave. Then a few minutes later, Jonathan left. I went upstairs. All those months he was reduced to this. I thought of killing him at first. I couldn't get the idea out of my mind. I felt he should be punished for what he'd done. Yes. She was to blame, wasn't she? You knew what time she arrived. You knew she always arrived on a Tuesday. So you waited for her car. Who? Vicky. Vicky Phillips. Is that how it happened? You just popped out of your shop for a couple of minutes. Just to drop more blood on your apron. You've been into the room, haven't you? You can still smell her perfume. Morning, Jack. Well, morning. Are we close to getting a statement from Sykes? No, he's still rambling and confused. Forensic haven't been able to turn up any matching blood. None of his knives match the murder weapon. We've got nothing on him. We've got to let him go. But he was able to describe the injuries in considerable detail. Well, so were half a dozen of our so-called newspapers, for which one of our number will receive a nice little backhander. Sounds worse than did before. Is she saying she's been assaulted or she's being assaulted? Well, the lab said it's being. Yeah, well, I don't know. What with all that racket, someone must have seen her making that call. How do you know Mr. Mayerbridge was in the new union hall at 12 o'clock, Miss Holland, if you didn't get there till quarter past or later? Because he always is. He's very particular about things, timekeeping. What about the man behind the door? He 
said there was someone else in the church. You saw about what? Half past 12. I, I didn't find out. Oh, I see. Good. All right. And uh, was Mr. Sykes with you then? No, he arrived at exactly half past. I see. No, please, thank you. G. G. Holland. What's the G stand for? Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Very attractive name, Gwendolyn. Um, what exactly do you do here, Gwendolyn? I give people mortgage advice. Mortgages? Do you really? I used to have one of those. A mortgage. I used to have a house. Mm. You know, three-piece suite, two beds. Suitcase above the wardrobe, all went up in flames. It's all right, no one was hurt. I live in an institution now, along with all the other inmates. Much to my super's insistence, he said that he wouldn't let me sleep in the cells anymore because it was lowering the tone. Anyway, uh, you made a statement to my detective sergeant about the meeting in the new Union Hall on Tuesday. Yes. Do you want to amend that statement? Do I need to? No, 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 no. It's just that we put off submitting these things in case someone remembers something or someone gets confused. We are human, you know. I saw Jonathan Mayerbridge at 12.15 exactly. Maybe you weren't there at all at that time. Your manager said that you rushed out of here on Tuesday. Why were you late? No. I, I left my bag behind. I had to come and pick it up, that's all. And how late did that make you? Sorry, I couldn't help noticing that uh, do you never wear a watch? Uh, no. My last one got broken. I just I've never replaced it. Only there's no clock in the new Union Hall. So how would you know it was exactly 12.15 when you supposedly saw Jonathan Mayerbridge? You like Jonathan, don't you? Yes. Well, he's a very good-looking man. He's a very good man. Oh, yeah. Yes, everybody says so. So, what's the truth about him and Vicky? They were madly in love. And you were the alibi. Should anyone ask? When he was supposedly up at the new Union Hall, preparing his notes. He confided in me. What about Edward Gull, Medina? He must have. Mm. He knows everything, doesn't he, Gwen? Yes. And what about you? Are you madly in love with Jonathan Mayerbridge? Someone's going to see you like that. Put the curtain rails up, then. What time are you back? Dawn. Good evening, and welcome to 3D. 
You can go out, you know. We don't have a baby. I've noticed that. I'm not likely to have one either. Companies are using electronic surveillance to Who'd want to raise a family in this dump? Even their own employees. The government. Uh oh. Here comes the lecture. Carol. We've been here seven days. Ah, no. I scratch them on the bedroom walls. Look, I thought coming out to the sticks to live would be a load of fun. They'd have a few trees to look at. You'd be in before 11 every night. But it ain't going to be like that, is it? If I'm going to be on my own, I'd rather be in London. I tell you, Denton, Frank, is... I haven't got time to argue with you! Exactly. Don't bother waiting up. There she goes. Mm. Bloody hell, Mrs. C, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Where is she? There's a new one. It's always a new one with him. He likes novelty. Sometimes they leave the curtains open. Why don't you get a television like everyone else? I like this. It's real life. You always work in twos, do you? On these jobs? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, that's right, yes, always. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, thanks. Oh. You know where I am? Yes. If you need me? Yes. Okay, thanks. Don't you ever leave me alone with her again. What's up? Don't you trust yourself? <laughs> We don't need a warrant. Oh, no. Rubbish, Frank. It's in the public domain. All right, here we are. What are you doing, Gov? Won't be a minute. The call is to self-knowledge, which is a painful process we naturally shrink from. Oh, yes. Look, it is the prophecies of Isaiah throbbing with expectancy. God. The works of a great writer, eh? Now, whatever you do, don't get excited. Six-inch narrow blade. I think they lost the last one, Gov. This is a very special moment, Frank. Hallelujah. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. On the 19th of this month, you purchased a kitchen knife from Abbott's in Knighton Lane. Yes. One of our knives was missing. Uh, I replaced it. 
Did you ever find out what happened to this missing knife? Well, at first I thought it must have been accidentally thrown out with the rubbish. Then, then what did you think? Well, I thought uh, Millie may have taken it. She's still unable to ask for everything she wants. And what would she want with one of your knives? I have no idea. Do you know what I keep asking myself? I keep asking, how would you notice that a kitchen knife was missing? You don't cook. If you're going to continue, I would like my solicitor to be present. You've got a call, will you? This interview is suspended at 14.02. Oh. That's interesting, Frank. Jonathan? Jonathan? Mr. Gull? Are you not working today? I'm unwell. What do you want? I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. A member of your church has just killed himself. That was a nasty moment just now, wasn't it? You thought I was talking about Jonathan. Sticking your neck out a bit, aren't you? You and your good reputation. Is he worth it, is he? I've been watching you and Mayor Bridge. I think that you're unnaturally fond of him. He was falling in love with Vicky, wasn't he? You couldn't bear that. You were jealous. That's about the truth of it, isn't it? You oaf. You can't get anywhere with this case, and rather than admit that, you want it taken away from you. Well, I'll be most happy to oblige. You better get dressed. Jonathan Mayerbridge is in custody. He wants to see you. I did not murder Vicky Phillips. But I did see her at Holly Grove. She had begged to see me again. She wrote letters which I destroyed. She telephoned me. And I agreed to see her once more. You agreed a time? It was to be before the scripture meeting. I parked some distance from Holly Grove. I didn't want Sy Mr. Sykes to see me or my car. And when I arrived, her car was the only one there. What time was this? It was about 20 past 12. I was going to be late for the meeting, but I wanted to deal with this there and then. I wanted to get it over with. I don't know exactly what time I saw the body. I panicked and I ran. I wish to see Mr. Frost. Well, if you'd like to wait, someone will help you as soon as possible. Now! Did you murder Vicky Phillips? Say yes, if you mean yes. Otherwise, say you did not. Do you wish to make a statement? She deserved it. You don't have to say anything more. But you do want to say more, don't you, Ruth? Hadn't she been a thorn in your side? Everything would have been perfect if she just wasn't there. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to request some time alone with my client. Ruining people's lives. What did you do with the knife? I disposed.
disposed of it. Whereabouts? Your clothes would have been covered in blood. Where did you dispose of them? I, I think I... You were in the playing field with Millie between 12.15 and 1 o'clock. Of course. <laughs> My client wishes to retract her statement. Do you wish to retract your statement? No. <laughs> Nash, go and check her story with Millie, will you? Right, come. Would you purge yourself to protect them? I don't know what that means. Would you tell a lie to protect Mr and Mrs Mayerbridge? Still don't know what you mean. You said you were with Ruth Mayerbridge when the murder was committed. I didn't know what you were going to ask me. Yeah, I was with her. I know the times exactly. I get the time checks off my radio. Please leave me alone. Ruth Mayerbridge. I'm not going to charge you with wasting my time. You came in here out of desperation to defend your husband, who I also am not going to charge. Sit down. But if you'd all helped with this investigation at the outset, your friend, Mr. Sykes, would still be alive. Of course, it could still be her. Who's that? Ruth Mayerbridge. Oh. I mean... Her only alibi is the living, right? Who'd say anything, wouldn't she? Keep everything sweet. I mean, I've seen someone do a fake confession like that before. It's like... It's like they're trying to take the blame. What is fake? She did it for love. I don't see how you can know that, Cuff. Experience. The balloon's up. Let's go. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna miss her sandwiches. Come on, come on! All right, come on, let's go, don't lose it. Firearms out there tonight. All right, don't gloat. 
Could have been very different. Anyway, Mullet's not going to make you a DI on the strength of recovering three lawn mowers and a shed full of Victorian garden furniture. He's not our ram raider, is he? Excuse me, he had 40 mowers in that bloody shed. Well, that's 40 crimes solved in one night. It's quite a clear up rate. Computer's going to notice us next month, Jack. Mm, true. Are you buying? You've seen me drinking before. In the past. Which is where I want to be. I love Vicky. More than you love me. More than your children. It's different, it's different, it's different. She didn't pity me. Will you please go and lie down? On my bed or your bed? How dare he say such a thing? It's not even dark. You think I killed her, don't you? Whatever happened, I would forgive you. Gov, listen to this. This is new from Forensic. Where's the woman? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We know your location, love. What's your name? It's County Radio. Well? It was being broadcast when the woman called in. Gov, it's her radio. We're a couple of fools, aren't we, Millie? Are we? Oh, yeah. It was Mr. Gull, wasn't it? He was the one who told you to say that you were with Ruth up in the playground. He gave you the perfect alibi. Yeah. And after you'd done it, you telephoned the police from the car park. You switched your radio on so that we wouldn't be able to hear your voice properly. Why did you do it, Millie? Was it because you fancied him? It wasn't that. Jonathan was going to leave. He was going to shack up with her. How do you know that? Because I listen. Stupid cat. She thought she could take him away from us. His family. She wanted to buy a flat with him. I used to talk about it on the phone. And you thought you'd have to find somewhere new? But it's good she's gone. Jonathan doesn't know that yet. No. I expect he'll come to realise it. In time. Is that what you were wearing?
the knife's in there as well. All right. I'll take care of everything. Matthew's birthday. I'll just leave it here. Crowded, isn't it, son? I suppose you've just dumped all this on here, have you? No. I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm shoving all mine in my drawers. <sighs> Seventeen. Millie will be the same age as Mayor Bridge when she gets out. But she'll still be just a kid. You know, she asked me if I could get her a cell to herself. I said they only give those to people who've been very, very bad. I hope they look after her. Who's that, Gov? Uh, I thought you should be the first to know. You're having a baby? I'm going to leave the force. A bit quick, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not going to work. Uh, if I stay, I'm going to lose my wife. No, well, you don't want to do that. No. You know, she misses her family and stuff. Yeah. We've got a good future, son. Not without her, Ivan, Gov. I would never have given it up. Well, with respect, sir, you and I are very different. Yes. Yeah, I expect you're right. So, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell Mr. Mullet in the morning. You've got the makings of a very good copper. Do you want to lift? No. I've got my expenses to do. I'll see you in the morning, then. Yes. Eight o'clock. On the dock. 